Hello and welcome to a rather late episode 128 of the Mouse's Makes Knitting podcast. My name is Mandy and the reason I say it's late is that you should have had this last week. I did record last week and it was so awful. I watch it back while I'm editing and I spent probably two thirds of it like this with my eyes squeezed shut trying to concentrate on what I was trying to say. It was dreadful. It was all over the place. There were great long pauses while my brain wandered off somewhere else. Um, and I'll tell you all about why later. But for now, I have a finished object. Actually, I've just remembered because I saw it written down. I've got my, my, like my notes propped up underneath the, the phone stand. This is the last month of the Topping Out Mal being run by Belinda's Baubles and myself. Um, it, it finishes on the 31st of March. All the details are on Belinda's podcast and there is a little video she's done. Both those things are linked below. I've got a paper cut on my finger I've just found. Um, but basically... You need to be getting any finished objects into the finished object thread on the Mouse's Makes Ravelry page before the 31st of March. There are prizes. Belinda has shown the prizes that she has collected on her last podcast. I have forgotten to get together my prizes. Honestly, you're lucky I'm here at all, really. Um... So yes, I'll try and remember and do that next week. If I don't, it'll just be a surprise. Anyway, I think that's all I had to say about that. I'm not 100% sure, because I'm not 100% at the moment. I didn't drag myself out of bed until half past 12. And that's because I had the most bizarre phone call. This lady rang me and she said, Hello Mandy, it's Evelyn. Now... I knew somebody called Evelyn when I was at school in the 70s in London. I'm very certain she does not have my phone number. So I was, she woke me up. I'm very confused when I wake up anyway. Anyway, apparently she thought I was the Mandy that she knows from the hairdressers. And I just kept saying, I don't go to the hairdressers. I cut my own hair. She must have thought I was a lunatic. Um, someone has given her my number. And I think I know why. And I'll tell you about why later on. Anyway, that leads me on to something else. Extraneous information. I've cut my hair. I cut it last week. It was about that long at the back. Ooh. I haven't taken any length off the front really, but I took probably a good four inches off the back because it was annoying me. I'd sit back in a chair and pin my head and then I'd be like this. You know what it's like if you've ever had long hair and it kept wrapping around my neck in the middle of the night it had to go would you like to see some knitting now i finished the first pair of peter's socks here they are i'm getting deja vu because i did all this last week well not the bit about the phone call that was only this morning these are Pe no yes peter's socks I'm sorry, I was confused. <laughs> I'm going to end up deleting this one as well. I was confused because Ewan just walked out the back door and into the garden. And because I saw Ewan, I wanted to say Ewan. It's his day off. He's passed his driving test. That happened last week as well. And he bought a car. No, was that last week? No, it was the week before. But I haven't told you because I deleted that one. Yes, he passed his driving test. First time. Very proud. Peter socks knitting at last. Now I'm going to sneeze. Oh jeez! I'm closing my eyes so I don't sneeze. Vanilla, my own sock recipe, which I've had to rewrite because I can't find my sock recipe book, as you know. I'm scanning while I'm talking to you about it. I know I will have put it in a really obvious place, and I'm just not seeing it. Oh. I've just had an idea. I'll look in a minute. Um, 
it's quite a good thing that I'm rewriting my sock recipes because I realise that I've been making Dave's socks a little bit short. So I make Peter's to exactly the same recipe as Dave's. So I've made these a little longer as well. And the next pair I make for Dave will be a little bit longer. The yarn is... And I'm glad I deleted last week because I told you the wrong thing. The main yarn is um, Jacquard... Superba Melange Jacquard by Rico in colourway number two. And then for the toes and heels, I've used Drops Fable Unicolour in 105, which is one of my, my favourite of their colourways. I really like that turquoise. I use it on a lot of things. But I'm going to have to buy some more because I only have... This little bit left. So that's the first pair of his socks done. He can have them now. Um, I couldn't give them to him last week because I needed to hang on to them for a bit longer so that I could show you. And I have started the second pair. This pair I wound the ball into two so I wouldn't make the same mistake I made with these. I don't think you can really tell, but they are one up, one down. Because I made one from the inside of the ball and one from the outside of the ball. And of course, that meant the pattern on one, well, the pattern ran in opposite directions. I'm, I'm over explaining. So I've started the second pair and these aren't going to match either. Because of the way the balls worked out. Again, I'm knitting them two at a time, just doing a few rows of one, a few rows of the other. But you can see they're not going to match. That starts with the green. That starts with the end of the blue. So, yeah. Is that the mat? That, mm, yeah, like that they would be. So they're off by a cuff, 15 rows. I don't think he'll mind. He didn't mind about those. And these I'm knitting in opal. Um, this is you and coming to tell me my lunch is ready. Or maybe not. Um, das Klassentreffen, which I'm told is the class reunion. And it is... Oh, it doesn't have a name. But it's obviously sort of frog related. And now Dave is ringing me every time. Every time I'm recording, Dave rings me. Oh, oh, now, oh, what have I done? Oh, <laughs> he's going to stop touching things. I bounced the call and then I, oh, I don't know what I was doing. The heels and toes I'm going to be doing in this one, which is one of my own hand dyed. It's some leftover from, it was originally in the Aurora Cabin Shawl, and then I pulled that down and it went into last year's Stephen West Mystery Knit Along Geogradient. Finally, the word has come back Geogradient. So I'm going to put that in the heels and toes. And I think it'll go quite nice. I haven't been doing much knitting at all. Let me tell you about the drama before I show you the next knitting. So last time I saw you, I told you we were having a boiler fitted on the Monday. Well, the boiler arrived at quarter to seven in the morning. <coughs> and then an hour later, the man to fit the boiler arrived. And between the two things, Rocket, who's Poppy's brother, and very, very frightened of strangers, um, ran away. And he didn't come back all day Monday, and he didn't come back Tuesday. We were out calling for him. Dave put out over a hundred leaflets through neighbours' doors. Um, we rang vets. And I think that's how the lady got my phone number and thought I was the Mandy that she knew from the hairdressers. So, yeah, all week he was missing. 
and Friday evening I had literally just decided we weren't going to find him he'd not been taken to any vets so we knew or at least we we hoped we knew nothing dreadful had happened to him but maybe he'd just found another home cats do that if they don't like where they're living if it becomes inconvenient for some reason they'll go and they'll find somewhere nicer and I was sure that's what he'd done because for the two weeks prior to him running away we'd had no heating and he's a cat that likes his radiator and because we'd had no heating all the rooms had their do doors closed so that we could try and keep the heat in the rooms we were actually in so he hadn't been able to go where he wanted and I thought that's it he doesn't like it here he's found himself somewhere else to live anyway I'd, I'd come to that conclusion and I, I was living with it and then Friday evening Dave burst through the door on his way home from work and went I found him and he rocket was over the road across the road from us we've got an engineering works they're quite famous it's phoenix engineering and you've probably seen their lorries not just in this country but all over the world they make the things that um, like the big tanks that hold tarmac and scrape up the road surface and that sort of thing huge huge things and he goes over there at night and catches rats it's gone very dark I think because the sun has gone in perhaps if I turn you a little bit it might and it seems that he'd gone over there and somehow got himself locked into their workshop which is massive um, but as Dave had walked up the road to our house He'd heard him calling at the shutter and he ran over there and was calling his name and he was wow, wow, wow. So I went over and carried on talking to him to try and keep him by the shutter while Dave ran up the road to the man who used to work there to get the phone number of the man who owns the place who came straight down to let us in to catch him. Except that the minute Rocket heard them open the side door to go into the workshop. He ran off and hid. And it took quite some time to find him. Um, he'd hidden himself. He was calling for Dave still, but he was so frightened he'd hidden. So Dave had to reach in and sort of grab him by the scruff. And he was so terrified that he bit Dave really badly on the back of his hand and sort of scratched all the other hand um so, so dave came out with rocket in the carrier and i'm sorry if you're squeamish pouring blood it was just like pouring so drama was over we got him home we let him out we checked him over he was filthy i'm going to put a picture in here of clean rocket and now i'm going to put a picture in of Freshly rescued Rocket. Bit grubby. So, yeah, checked he was fine. He was starving. He just ate everything that wasn't nailed down. Um, and then Poppy came crawling out from under the table and literally crawling. She couldn't use her back legs. So, you know, all the, the emotional drama of having found him and rescued him and everything. Now we're all back up because Rock, Poppy's got to go to the vets. Rocket doesn't need to go. He's fine. But Poppy's got to go. So we rang the emergency vet and they said, bring her in. She hadn't eaten all day. She hadn't drunk. We don't think she's drinking. And that's the problem, apparently. But of course... The cat carrier is, it looks like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre has occurred somewhere near it. So we were having to clean all the blood off the carrier to get the cat in. Dave's trying to clean and, and put plasters on his hand. Oh, it was just, it was chaos. It was absolute chaos. So we went down to the veterinary hospital and they had a look at her and they said, well, she's very dehydrated. Long story short, they kept her in all weekend. 
I'm not even going to tell you how much it cost. It cost two and a half times what we were told it would cost, which we were a bit cross about. Um, and it caused some drama of its own because we didn't have the money lying around. And we'd been told when we took her in that when we came to pick her up, bring her insurance form and they, they claim on the insurance. Well, when we went to pick her up on Sunday, we were told, oh, no, we don't do that. You have to do that. So we had to pay them. And now we've got to claim it back. Just added to the stress. Anyway, between those times, we have a minor injuries unit here, um, but it closes at nine o'clock and cat bites are very nasty, but it had bled lots and been thoroughly cleaned. And I thought it'll wait till the morning. He's not going to die between now and the morning. So, and we were all exhausted. We all went to bed. We had no dinner. We just went to bed. We were drained. So next morning, Dave got up, he worked on a Saturday and I said, are you going to go into the MIU before you go to work? Oh, no, it'll be fine. So he wouldn't go. He went on into work. Saturday evening, he came home from work and his hand was swollen. And he said, I think you better have a look at this. And he took the plasters off and I said, you're going to the hospital and you're going now. So he trotted off to the hospital and he came back having had it thoroughly cleaned um, and with two lots of antibiotics prescribed. I've changed the dressing twice in between times and we've cleaned it up. It's not getting any worse. I'm not going to go into details because not everybody is excited by the... Um, I'm not even going to say the word in case that upsets somebody. But yes, he's got to go back tomorrow morning on his way into work to have the nurse check it and redress it and see if he needs more antibiotics prescribed. So all of that combined with Ewan buying a new car and me going out driving with Ewan in his new car and not having my dual controls because I used to be a driving instructor has led to me being very, very stressed and very, very exhausted as a result of being very, very stressed. And so I've done pretty much nothing but sleep since Friday. You're lucky I have actual clothes on today. Saturday and Sunday, I didn't put clothes on even. I did shower, but I didn't get dressed. I was just done for. Um... And that's bad for my kidneys, it's bad for my blood pressure, and it's bad for my heart. So I'm trying to be good and stay calm. But I haven't done a lot of knitting because I've just felt rubbish, really rubbish. I just want to hibernate, essentially. Um, and if the mad... Sorry, I shouldn't call her mad woman, because it wasn't her fault somebody gave her the wrong phone number. If the lady hadn't rung and woken me up, I'd probably still be asleep in bed. Anyway... Poppy is home. Um, she's still, she's never going to be well again, they tell us. Um, this is probably as good as it gets. And without wanting to be morbid or upset anybody, um, I don't think she's going to be with us for very long. If you can hear that, that's her brother calling because he can't find her again. The whole weekend, having been lost and then found the whole weekend he was walking around the house looking for Poppy in all her little hidey holes and in all her favourite beds and of course she was at the animal hospital it's been very traumatic for everybody cats humans everybody anyway knitting not done much this I fished out a fortnight ago this is my summer sorbet and when I showed it to you last, I was there. Well, since then, I've knit down to where I have split the sleeves. I've knit the sleeves because I've only got a limited amount of yarn. I can't replicate it because this was yarn that went wrong. So I can't do it again unless I manage to get it wrong in exactly the same way again. Um, but I'll be honest, I haven't touched this for a week. 
So I'm down just past the armholes. That much past the armhole. Where are we? That much. I haven't knit on it. I've been looking for comfort things and this is just round and round. Right, can someone explain this to me? Someone needs to do a psychological study because I know there's a lot of us, if not all of us, are the same. I didn't want to knit round and round doing plain stocking stitch on this, so I knit round and round and did plain stocking stitch on these. How does that work? And it works the other way as well. Oh, I don't want to knit those socks, it's just round and round. So I'll knit my jumper round and round. How? Why? I wonder sometimes with me if it's a colour thing. I've had enough of this colour. This colour is not doing it for me at the moment, so I've moved on to another colour. I think that can be all it is. So the other thing that I've been knitting on, um, there are a couple of things. I sorted out into this little bag suitable leftovers for the um, little mitered square blanket. This really is the only thing I want to knit at the moment. So last time you saw it there were just those two and now there are, it's got five friends. Um, the top three and the purple one are my own hand dyed. The others, I don't know, they're just scraps. Possibly not even scraps of mine, they might be scraps other people have given me. Though I suspect this blue one was part of a Ducky Darlings mini set. And I've used some for my long paws triangulum, um, but there was enough to put a square in here. So I'm probably going to continue putting squares in here. There's only that teeny tiny bit left and I'm going to put it in there. It won't be enough to make in here. Oh, I can smell bacon. He's not shut the door. He's cooking bacon for lunch. Um, Teeny tiny crochet square blanket. I don't think that'll be enough for a square, but I'm going to stick it in there anyway. Eventually, when I've finished all these scrap blankets, I'm going to make a magic knot ball and then just do some sort of crochet blanket, a granny stripe or something just with a, a giant magic knot ball. Um, and then I have also been knitting. This is my favourite blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. And I'm putting my birthstone collection tonals in it. So that was, oh dear, garnet for January, amethyst for February and I'm now putting in the aquamarine for March. Um, there is another blanket in this bag that I'm knitting giant mitered squares with the other birthstone colourway because I do a tonal and a variegated though next month may be a little different and next month is diamond and I have plans um yeah so that's going to go into the giant mitered square blanket I'm trying to reach it so yeah that's how big the the squares are in this one so that's got the January and the February in. It's waiting for March. And then March will be the last one on this row. So I'm going to go three across and four up. And it'll make sort of a lap blanket size, I think. Be all right. So that's pretty much everything. Only 24 minutes. I really haven't done a lot. I've done a little bit. Um, I've done some put some rounds on a couple of muscle bros but it's not worth showing you because there's there's not um what's the word I won't say quantifiable but that's not the word I mean there's not like visible progress it's it's a bit longer than it was last time you saw it doesn't seem worth showing it to you I don't know where to put this I'm just gonna put it there And other than that, I've been mostly sleeping and scrolling and watching YouTube. 
because that's apparently what I need to rest and recover. Oh gosh, he's ringing again. Oh no, I've pressed twice again. I'm going to have to go and ring him back because he's clearly worrying about what's happened to me. Um, there are a couple of podcasts that I wanted to bring to your attention. I will link them down below. One of them is new to me, but not new. Her name is Candy and her podcast is Candy B Knitting. So it's Candy with an I, just the letter B and then knitting, no G on the end. And the other one, I think, is called The Northern Knits. They've done one episode. One of the ladies watches this podcast and I've forgotten your name. I'm so sorry. But you can see what sort of state my brain is in. And if you watch the podcast, you know what I'm like anyway. But I'll link that one below as well. Um, that's two ladies that do that. <sighs> I think that's all I had to tell you. It better be because Dave's just going to keep ringing. And if I don't answer, he'll be ringing the boys to try and check on me. So, um, yes, I'm going to go. I will hopefully see you next week. So that there better not be any more drama because I just can't cope. And, um, yeah, until then, have a stress-free, happy knitting, crocheting, whatever craft you choose to do, week. Bye, guys. <laughs>